Assalamualaikum So now we continue with the next elements of any contract under the elements of legal capacity This is the learning outcomes for today's lecture First we will start with the introduction to legal capacity to contract followed by the general rule of capacity to contract which may be divided into two first is on the general rule on a minor and second is the general rule on sound mind and then exceptions to the general rule right. so we'll start with an introduction first in order to conclude a valid contract the law requires that person must have a full capacity this is according to the contracts at 1950 that is a requirement for the parties to be competent in order to conclude a valid contract so he must be a competent or capable person who is considered as competent who is considered as capable person who is capable who has the capability to enter into valid contract you may refer to section 11 of the contracts at 1950 stated every person is competent to contract who is the age of majority according to the law to which he is subject and who is of sound mind and not disqualified from contracting by any law to which he is subject. So based on this uh, provision, there are three requirements of competency. If you want to conclude a valid contract, first you must prove that you attain the age of majority and then you some mind and not disqualified from any law to enter into contract if you are able to fulfill the three conditions here the three requirements here then you are considered as competent party to enter into valid contract this is very important eh? so uh, from these provisions, it is clear that there are two categories of person that are excluded from the definitions of person competent to contract, and they are a minor and an unsound person or insane person. Now, let's start with the general rule on minor. Okay, according to the general rule, all contracts entered by a minor are void. And this also include other related transactions such as an agency and land matters. In other words, if you want to have agency transactions or land matters with the minor, your contract is probably probability to be the contract's uh, probability is to be void. Okay, this is because of the general rule. For example, let's say you want to appoint a minor as your agent. The contract of agency may be valid. However, all the liabilities, responsibilities against the third party will be bare by you as the major partner. Even in land matters as well, you may refer to the case of Tan Hee Juan against the Bunkyet. This is stated and the case is stated in your manual whereby it involved the a plaintiff, a minor, executed transfer of land in favour of the defendant and the transfers were witnessed and subsequently registered. However, later, uh, he applied to the court to a set aside the transfer in order to uh, cancel the transactions and for residential relief. So the court ruled that the transaction itself was void and court ordered restoration of the property to the minor. 
ya so this case (uh) can be conclude that even it (uh) even it involve minor in like matters but the contract is still void (ppc) okay who is a minor we talk about the general rule on minor so who is considered as a minor minor is a person who has not reach the age of majority so how we identify the age of majority according to section two of the age of majority at nineteen seventy one provide that it a minor (uh) sorry a person who reach the age of majority is (uh) when he reach eighteen years old okay so when you reach eighteen years old meaning that you are not longer called as a minor so you can enter into valid contract without any without any obstacles (ppc) okay (uh) back to the general rule just now we have one case Mohari Bibi against Damodar Schools the Privy Council had that an infant cannot make any valid contracts in other words contract entered by minor are void okay and the same rule also apply in the case of Tan who joined against the Bumi Club just now Alright, however, this is only a general rule, but we still have the exceptions to this general rule. What are the exceptions? First, we discuss on the exceptions under the under the age of majority at 1971. The capacity of any person to act in matters relating to marriage. Divorce, dowry, and adoptions. For, for uh, the common example is the promise of marriage entered by minors or their parents on their behalf is valid. So if a minor entered into a contract of marriage, the contract is valid. Example of case you may refer to the case of Rajaswari against Bala Krishnan, nineteen fifty eight. The facts of the case, uh, both parties were Salamese Hindus. After the marriage ceremony, the first defendant sent letter to the second county. Who is the first defendant? The husband. Eh? And the second plaintiff here is the father of the wife. Okay, The father of the first plaintiff. So the husband want to repudiate the promise of marriage to the first plaintiff because she being a minor. So according to the husband, his wife is still a minor, so in capacity to enter the contract of marriage. So the court held that the age of majority for entering a marriage contract is different from other contracts entered into by a minor. So the marriage contract were not affected by the general rule of minor in regards to the capacity. So in this case, the contract of marriage is valid even if it involves a minor. That is the first exception. So move on to the next exception under the necessaries contract, contract for necessaries. In common law, minor is liable on contract for necessaries. What is considered as necessaries? The, to the life of minor, things which are essential to the existence and reasonable comfort of the infants. For example, the education, uh, shelter, okay, uh, food, services, okay, all the required of uh, the minor's needs. Okay, the, uh, and it depends on the minor's situation of life. Okay, for example, uh, clothes uh, could be uh, necessary to minor, but if the minor is already adequately stocked, they may be treated as mere luxury. So it depends on the conditions of the minor. And minor's liability include necessary supply to anyone whom he is legally bound to support. For example, if the minor has wife, children, then it also includes the the, the this uh, 
for it for it (uh) okay (uh) the liabilities of minor and please take note that when we discuss on the contract for necessaries we must include section sixty nine of the contracts add into our discussions okay what is stated under section (uh) sixty nine if a person incapable of entering into a contract or anyone who is illegally bound to support is supplied by another person with necessary suited to his condition in life the person who has furnished such supplies is entitled to be reimbursed from the property of such incapable person from this provision uh, we can uh, conclude that contract for necessaries is valid so what are the consequences of this contract so these are the four main ideas derived from the provision under section 69 the necessaries must have been supplied to a minor and it includes the minor's liability to anyone whom he is legally bound to support such as his wife or child then the supplier of the necessaries may claim on the a reasonable price which may not be the same as the contract the seller may only claim a reasonable price and the money is not personally liable he is only obliged to pay if he has the property to do so if the minor has no property then he is not he is not liable to pay for the uh, for the goods supplied to him example of case for necessaries is the government of malaysia against a good since 1971 in this case it involves the education okay the plaintiff claim uh, 11,500 ringgit and this is the sum that actually spent by the government in educating the defendant at that time the defendant was a minor so whether the contract is valid okay we need to determine the subject matter the subject matter in this contract is the uh, education itself okay the purpose of necessary uh, contract is for the education so education was necessary for the minor and thus the defender was liable for the repayment of reasonable sum spent on him. okay the next question is what if the minor made false representation that he was of full age? Minor know that if if he if he uh, made a declaration that he is still a minor, then he cannot enter into contract. For example, let's say the minor made false representation uh, he was of full age. Actually. Uh, he is only uh, 16 years old so he is considered as minor but he wants to enter into contract then he made false representation he made false statement to the other party so the effect is you may refer to case of Natasons against Tanalachini 1952 when an infant has induced or influenced a person to contract with her by means of a false representation that she was of full age she is not a stop from pleading her infancy infancy in avoidance of the contracts in other words in other words the minor is not denied from pleading her infancy so he can uh, uh, he can declare that he is still a minor in order to set aside the contract the rationale behind this is uh, we designed the law in order to protect the minor okay and the next exception is on the scholarship agreement entered by a minor based on section 4 subsection a of the contracts amendment at 1976 no scholarship agreement shall be invalidated on the grounds that the scholar entering into such agreements is now of the age of majority. In other words, 
a scholarship entered by a minor is valid contract. Okay, examples of scholarship agreement, loan, appointment to the course of study, other facility for the purpose of education and learning, a sponsorship. These are regarded as scholarship and the scholarship agreement is uh, binding against the minor. Okay, next exception to the general rule where the contract is still valid if the minor enter into an apprenticeship contract. This is also known as beneficial contract. Why beneficial contract? Because this type of contract give a benefit to the minor. Okay, for example, a contract which uh, provide a uh, training for a trade, professions, or other beneficial experience to the minor. According to the Children and Young Person Employment Act 1966, a minor who is below than 14 and young person below than 18 may enter into a contract of apprenticeship. And based on section 13 of the same act, <clears throat> any child or young person shall be competent to enter into contract of service. So this is also known as contract of service under this act, otherwise than as an employer and may sue as plaintiff without his nets of friends. Nets of friends here referring to the uh, lawyer or uh, define any action without a guardian at litem or he can take action against the other party without lawyer okay or uh, without uh, guardians okay, to act on his behalf in other words the minor personally can take action on his behalf Example of case that you may discuss under these exceptions is a case of Dolly against White City Stadiums, 1935. In this case, the defendant was a minor and uh, <coughs> he was a professional boxer. In considering of his receiving a license from the British Boxing Board of Control, the defendant agreed to be bound by the rules of the board. One of the rules stated that if the defender is disqualified from the tournament, he would lose the he would lose the prize money. Unfortunately, the defender disqualified from the tournament and he claimed the prize money. He argued that the contract signed between uh, him and the board was not binding because he was a minor. But the court held that the contract was binding on him even he was a minor. Another case, you may refer to the case of D. Francesca against Barnum, 1890, whereby the principle of this case stated that the minors may sue and be sued under the contract of apprenticeship unless the terms appears to be unfair and unreasonable. So, minor himself has power to sue and be sued under the contract of apprenticeships but you must make sure that the terms itself must be fair and reasonable against both parties okay another exception is under insurance contract according to the insurance act 1996 a minor above 10 may enter into a contract of insurance but if below 16 must have written consent from his parents or guardian. This exception is based on the presumptions that it is in a minor's best interest to ensure to insure himself or his property against consequences. Okay, even for a baby, baby can enter into valid uh, insurance contract because the 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 primary consideration is for the uh, to safeguard the uh, to safeguard the interest of the baby. Okay, so the insurance contract is still 
Okay, and when we discuss about the minor issues on minority, since the contract uh, is void, we use section 66 of the Contracts Act. <coughs> when an agreement is discovered to be void, any person who has received any advantage under the agreement or contract is bound to record it or to make composition for it to the person, sorry, to the person from whom he received it. Every time when you uh, when you conclude the contract as a void contract, so this section is compulsory really to be discussed. Under void contract, if a person receives advantage or benefit under void contract, he must restore it. <coughs> okay, or to make composition for it. So, in case of a minor, when he entered into a contract and the contract is discovered to be void, so the miner is bound to restore it or to make compensation to other parties. Okay, last but not least is uh, the general rule on unsound mind. Okay, based on section 12, subsection 1 of the Contracts Act 1915. A meeting, a, a, summary, a meeting of summary is at the time when a person makes a contract, he is capable of understanding it and of forming a rational judgment as to the contract effect on his interest. This is the definition of sound mind. At the time you enter into contract, you know that, okay, you know that the interest that will affect you you can form rational judgment and then you are capable to understand the whole contract. Okay, the subject matter of the contract. Then you are considered as sound person, sound mind person. <clears throat> Based on section 12, uh, this also covers the contracts entered into uh, with a mentally disordered person as well as those person incapacitated through sickness such as fever, alcohol or other drugs. <coughs> okay. This is because this person has no ability to understand what he is doing. Okay, they are they are not capable to understand the nature of the contract and then to form a rational judgment as to its effects upon his interest. So, what are the effects of contract made by unsound mind person? The contract becomes valuable. Please state that we are following the principle of common law because our contracts at 1950 is silent in regard to this matter. So, the contract is actually voidable at the options of the person of unsound mind who can choose to uh, to voidable the contract is the person of unsound mind but he must prove these two elements first element is that okay the unsound mind person must prove that the mental disorder or intoxications must be proved at the time he entered into contract and other party to the contract also knows of his conditions. In other words, let's say A is under intoxicated. Okay, so he is unable to form a rational judgment and B, okay, at that time ask him to enter into contract to sell his car to B. So whether the contract is valid, the contracts may be voidable at the options of A. Why A? Because A is the unsound mind person. At that time, he was under intoxicated, so he cannot form a rational judgment, so he can choose to voidable the contract. Okay, provided that A can prove that at the time he entered into contract with B, 
he was under intoxication. Okay, unsound mind. And he also knows of his condition. Okay. So, if A is able to fulfill these two requirements, then he can vulnerable the contract. And the vulnerable contract, A may either choose to proceed with the contract or to terminate with the contract. This is the effects of vulnerable contract. Okay, so uh, please take note on the general rule on minor and unsound mind persons. What are the legal effects of contracts entered by them? Okay, especially on the issue of minority, whether there is any exceptions. Okay, so you must pay attention to this kind of um, uh, exceptions. Okay, because this is a common, uh, commonly ask questions for a pro for a problem based question later. Okay. Alright, if you have any problems regarding the lecture today, please ask me as soon as possible. Thank you guys for your kind attention.